Well, g'day curd nerds. Today we're making Cacio Cavallo. Now, Cacio Cavallo is literally translated from Italian as cheese on horseback. And I just happen to have a couple of cheeses on horseback just here. Very excited about this cheese, you know me. Uh, anyway, so there's my Cacio Cavallo and uh, this is the not so finished product. It's ready to uh, be matured now. Uh, so I'm gonna go and hang that up in my laundry uh, to mature. Uh, but anyway, let's get on and see how I made Cacio Cavallo. So I'm using Inglenook Dairy's unhomogenized milk. Uh, for this cheese. The ingredients I'm using is 14 litres or 14 quarts of whole cow's milk, a quarter of a teaspoon or 1.25 millilitres of thermophilic starter culture, a quarter of a teaspoon or 1.25 millilitres of mesophilic culture, three quarters of a teaspoon or 3.5 millilitres of calcium chloride diluted in quarter of a cup or 60 millilitres of non-chlorinated water, three quarters of a teaspoon or 3.5 millilitres of liquid rennet. I'm using single strength IMCU 200. That's diluted in quarter of a cup of cool non-chlorinated water. You'll also need a bowl of iced water and some saturated brine solution at about 18%. So I'm just whisking in the cream that was sitting on top there and we're bringing the target temperature of the milk up to the target temperature of 35 celsius which is 95 fahrenheit so take out all your utensils and then just sprinkle the mesophilic starter culture over the top we're using two sachets of the mad millie mesophilic starter culture there one sachet and here comes the next when I manage to rip the top off it so that equals a quarter of a teaspoon but then for the thermophilic starter culture I'm using MOT 92 by Sacco for this culture but any thermophilic will do Okay, allow that to rehydrate for five minutes. Usually uh, I cover the pan. In fact, there it is there. So once the five minutes have passed, we stir in the culture that uh, is still floating on top. So use a top to bottom motion to get it right down to the bottom through a mix throughout the cheese. The milk, that is, not the cheese. So cover that and allow it to ripen for 60 minutes at 35 Celsius, 95 Fahrenheit. So some cream would have floated to the top and it did in my case. So I'm just stirring that back in now. So that's incorporated back into the milk. And then add in your calcium chloride solution this adds back soluble calcium into any heat treated milk and as this has been pasteurized I need to do this okay it's time to add the rennet to the milk so after you've added the rennet stir for no more than one minute So take out all of your utensils, just checking the temperature there. It's dropped down a little bit, but that'll be okay. So cover and allow the milk to set for 60 minutes at 35 Celsius, 95 Fahrenheit. Okay, let's check for a clean break. 
that is perfect, nice and clean. Now, if that didn't work for you, wait another 10 to 15 minutes and then check it again. Okay, I'm just using my trusty curd cutter here. Now, because it was such a firm curd set, I was chasing it all the way around. Anyway, now cut the curds into 1.25 centimeter or half inch cubes. So I'm doing the vertical cuts there with my curd knife. So try and get them as even as possible. That way you don't have to recut them as you're stirring them later on. So I'm going the other way now. Just making sure I've made even cuts at about half an inch. Okay. So pop the lid on and allow it to heal for five minutes. So five minutes later you'll see some whey sitting on the top which is all fine and good. And I've turned the heat on there. But first of all we're just going to stir it gently and cut any large cubes as necessary. And there are a few there but I'll work through those as we stir. Now over the next 30 minutes you need to heat the milk or the curds and whey up to 40 degrees Celsius or 104 Fahrenheit. You can see that I'm cutting large size cubes there as we go along. So once you're up to 40 Celsius, then we turn the heat off. You can see a lot of whey has been expelled there, which is a good sign that you've done the right thing. So we're going to have to stir for another 15 minutes, holding the temperature at 40C or 104F. So 15 minutes later, even more whey has been expelled. You can see that they're about the size of kidney beans, uh, the curd cubes that is. Now I'm quite lucky because the pot I used was 14 litres so it's really close to the top so um, I was careful not to make any splashing moves <laughs> that might have uh, got the whey tipped all over the side. Anyway, so we're going to let the curds acidify uh, over the course of one and a half hours. So it settles to the bottom during this time as well. So this is for the acid development so we can stretch this cheese later on. So after the hour and a half we're going to drain off the curds and whey through a cheesecloth lined colander. Yes you can keep the whey if you like. There's only so much whey a man can drink. Okay, that has formed a consolidated mass, which is perfect. Now allow that to drain for a further 30 minutes. This also assists in acid development within the curds. Now the pH should be between 5.3 and 5. I measured it previously with some paper. Meanwhile, don't forget to heat up 8 litres of water to 85 Celsius, 185 Fahrenheit. This is for stretching the curd move your curd mass to a chopping board. Now I chose to make one Caccio Cavalli at a time so I cut it in half and then um, shredded up the half there. You can see I'm putting the cubes into a large um, wide stainless steel bowl which is perfect for this sort of uh, thing for stretching curds. So the cube sizes don't have to be exact. So I'm only working with one half of the curds at a time and it's about this time we need to put on 
your heat resistant gloves. These are very thick rubber gloves that I got from the hardware store and I sanitise these every time I want to make pasta filata cheese. So I'm using some of the hot water that was 85 Celsius and I'm going to pour that over the curds until they're just submerged. Now just to let you know, this is very hot stuff. Make sure you're wearing heat resistant gloves or you're using two spoons or something to consolidate the curd mass to make it shiny. So all the cubes will melt together during this phase. And they do stretch a little bit, but the water does cool down really quickly. So once it consolidates into a mass, you can see it stretch, stretches readily. And I'm just stretching it a few times there. And then folding it over. Now I tried to make it into the ball shape that I wanted, but it wasn't stretching up. The water had cooled down too much. So I heated up some more water in the process just to um, just check the temperature there. And I'm not sure if you can see it, but it says it was about 50 degrees Celsius. So too cool to do what I wanted to do with it. So I'm draining off the water and we're going to add more hot water over the curds until they're just submerged as well. There we go. So now that it's hot enough, it stretches really easily. So once you've stretched it a few times, and we're going to shape it into a pear shape so it's got a round bulbous bottom and it's got a little bit of a, a neck and you need that neck because we're going to hang the cheese on string to cure so however you do it I'm not an expert at this by any means so create your neck in the bulbous bottom and then once it's formed, place it into the ice water bath for 15 minutes. And that's what mine looks like. Good enough, I reckon. So then you take the remainder of the curds and you do the same thing. Uh, cut them up into small pieces, use some hot water, stretch it out, and then shape it into a pear shape as I'm doing right there. I really do find this relaxing. It's good fun to make pasta filata cheese once you get the hang of it. You can make all sorts of shapes. Now, if it no longer stretches, then drain off the water and add more hot water and that's how you go through the process. Now, I'm taking one out of the iced water and putting the other one in. So pop the second one in the ice water once you've got the shape that you wanted. And I'm just sitting the other one on a chopping board until uh, the other one's ready. Okay, get out my trusty brine container and put the one that's already been cooled down into it. And we're going to brine that for six hours if you've made two cheeses. If you've used the whole batch to make one cheese, you need to brine it for 12 hours. Okay, so that's still in ice water, so I'm just going to tip that out now. And I had to make up a second batch of brine. I just couldn't fit these two large cheeses in the same container. So this is cool brine. This is not hot. I just used the pot to mix it in. So there's our brine solution, just pouring that over the cheese, floating in the bowl, 
which just goes to show you don't need a specific brining container. You can brine in anything as long as you remember to turn the cheese over at the halfway mark. So the halfway mark for this cheese was out three hours. So three hours into the brining, I turned them over so that the, uh, the top was then the bottom. So the cheese gets uh, an even salting all the way through. So six hours later, we have our cheeses. So now we're going to take them out of the brine. That one's a little pedantic and won't sit still. Sit, will you? Goodness me. <laughs> okay. Now they're both sitting together nicely. So we're going to air dry these cheeses for two to three days until they're touch dry. Uh, they may go yellow. They may also flatten a little. Uh, and that's no issue as long as you turn them regularly um, so that they main their shape or some semblance of their shape anyway. So you can see they've yellowed a fair bit there, they've dried out. And once touch dry, take about two meters of uh, food safe twine and make it into a loop. And then you can just simply loop each cheese around the neck with the twine. Don't need anything more than that. So I haven't tied a knot or anything, it's just a loop around the neck. And then on the other cheese, on the second cheese, do the same. Make a loop, just fold it back on itself. I was confused a little bit at the time. There you go, I figured it out. So we make a loop, Gav. Fine. Right, pop it over the neck of the second cheese. So we cure at 17 to 18 degrees Celsius or 62 to 65 at approximately 80% humidity. So there we go. After one month, we can rub the rind with olive oil. We cure for two to four months for a table cheese or six to 12 months for a hard grating cheese. I'm going to opt for the uh, table cheese myself. Well, I think you'll agree that was a very fun cheese to make. I really enjoyed the stretching part to make these into the cheese as they are now. Now they do tend to flatten during the um, air drying time. Uh, don't be too worried about that because as I've experienced when I've made provolone um, the same way, they tend to then regain their shape uh, during aging. They, they form the, the, the bulbous sphere like a pear shape. Um, so all those hard surfaces will flatten out. Um, as the uh, cheese ripens. Anyway, very exciting. Um, thanks for watching as always. Don't forget that you can buy kits. Um, I, would, I would recommend the Italian uh, cheese making kit to make Cacio Cavallo. It's got all the ingredients in there. Now if you haven't uh, checked out my Patreon page, there's lots of great perks over there uh, including rewards for different tiers. Um, the link is in the description below. Anyway, thanks for watching Curd Nerds, and I'll see you next time.